edition of WPRP. I'm Neva. And I'm Joyce. And oh dear, did you all know that it was Christmas? Oh my Christmas cookies, it really is. Enough of our cringiness. It's time that we go follow all along with our choir. Every year, the PRP Choir performs the Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah. The piece is done as the last piece of the winter concert with all of the current choirs. Choir alumni are invited back to the concert and invited on stage to sing the song with us. This is an incredibly important piece for us, having lasted as a tradition since the 70s. My name is Aaron Weaver. I'm the choir director at Pleasure Ridge Park High School. My name is Julie Nicholson, and I taught at Pleasure Ridge Park High School from 1985 to 2016 and was the choir director here from 1985 to 2003. Uh, I am also a PRP graduate of the class of 1978. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Hallelujah Chorus is a movement of a larger work by a guy named George Frederick Handel. Um, it's part of what's called the Messiah. Um, it's one of the movements, it's the most famous movement of that piece. Uh, it's an oratorio piece that tells a story and it's a classical piece of music that's really, really cool. The Hallelujah Chorus is probably one of the most iconic choral pieces that's known worldwide. It is part of a larger work by George Frederick Handel called The Messiah. Uh, it's performed, like I said, all over the world. And uh, I sang it as a high school student. I directed it as a choir director and even just sang it in the local Master Crowd concert this past year. The Hallelujah Chorus uh, is not only a great piece of music to sing for the students um, on its own, but it's also a really great chance for the alumni to come back and sing a song on their winter concert with the actual choir students that are still in choir right now. Um, and it's a, it's a chance for everybody to kind of perform um, a really, really big piece of music that's meant to be played with a big orchestra. Um, and uh, it's just a really, really cool moment. Well, it was always the concluding number of the holiday concerts, both when I was a student and as a teacher. Uh, I think through tradition started with Gail Brown, who was my choir director and my predecessor here. And I know that she did it all of the years that she was here. So we're talking probably from 1972 on until 2003. Every PRP choir holiday concert ended with the Hallelujah Choir. The coolest thing was to see how many alumni were actually coming up to sing with us, uh, but then also uh, just the joy on people's faces when they were able to sing it and also listen to it in the audience. Um, but it was also the first time I ever got to conduct it in a performance, and it was <laughs> really, really thrilling. It was kind of chills up your spine moment. It was really cool. Uh. It just carries on a tradition. It gives us something that everyone who is a member of PRP's choir from the early 70s through now shares and has in common. And it just takes a, reinforces a tradition that has just been there and gives us all a way to be connected. Wow, that really jingled my bells. Oh yeah, we are definitely going Christmas caroling this year. Yeah, I think they're good. No offense, Joyce. Yeah, you're probably right. One of our own helper elf, Caleb Martinez, is showing us how Southeast Christian Church's high school ministry is making changes to be able to reach more people within their high school. A local community church is going to start opening its doors next semester to start offering a place for students to hang out with friends, play some games, eat a free meal, and get some help with homework. To learn more about this program designed for high school students in the area, we talked to James Hauser, campus pastor of Southeast Christian Church, Southwest Campus. You know, our thing that we want people to do is understand who Jesus is, and so we feel like he changes everything, changes communities, changes people's hearts, and so uh, I would say, you know, our mission is to connect people to Jesus and then hopefully to introduce them uh, into community with one another.
Apart from community within the church, James Hauser also talked to us about community within families. Yeah, so our high school ministry has been really big on connecting with uh, just families in general. And so uh, the way that we view our high school ministry is partnering with, with parents and with families. But we also realize that there are a lot of students who uh, we're not connected to their parents. We'd love to at some point, but uh, we see ourselves as being a, uh, another way to help strengthen families you know, throughout the community. And so moving our high school ministry, which is HSM, from a Sunday night to a Wednesday night, we feel like it gives more opportunities for students to get connected to this place and ultimately an opportunity for us to uh, connect with families that way. Uh, Sunday night still holds a little bit of a traditional family night. So we love the fact that families can be together on that night. And Wednesday night, uh, you know, is just sort of a, a different night. So we're not taking people away from their families. Today, there is a growing number of high school age students who do not attend services every week. We asked James Hauser what his message to those students is. Uh, sometimes you hear different stories about, you know, people who go to church or quote religious people. And there's a real genuine fears I think sometimes people have based off of just what they've heard. So my so thing would be like, hey, why don't you just give it a shot? And the reality is, is our hope is, is that our students are connecting with you in your schools before you even come to this place. And so, uh, you know, we use the phrase around here, you belong here. And uh, we aren't one of those people where you're going to come in, we're going to bait and switch. We tell you up front, hey, we really want to connect you with this person named Jesus because we believe that he will change your life for the better. Uh, but we're not forcing it down you. If you choose not to believe, it's cool. We're gonna love you anyway. And uh, we're gonna care about you, but we're not gonna do things that make you feel uncomfortable or weird. We're not gonna force you to, to do things or to say things. Like, it's totally like, hey, we want you to come. We want you to connect. We know that you're gonna, you're gonna be cared about here, that, that people here are genuinely gonna take an interest in you, regardless of your past, regardless of, we don't, we don't really care about those things because essentially God, doesn't care about things. He cares about your future, and we care about your future as well. Yeah, we have yeah. a whole high school ministry team that is uh, super relevant to high school students, still connects really well with them. And they and genuinely do care about students. They love uh, interacting with them. They, uh, they are driven by getting students connected to Jesus and to one another. They uh, put in crazy amount of hours. Uh, they, you know, spend time with the individual students as well as with the, the larger amount. And, um, and I would also just see the way that uh, so many students' lives have been changed for the better uh, by interacting and, and being connected to them. So We also talked to student pastor Matt Erksleben about what this program is they are offering and why they are offering it. Starting in January of 2020, we're offering a high school program for all high schoolers in our community that meet on Wednesdays after school. Immediately following school, we're opening, opening up our church and we're offering after school activities, a coffee shop, free meal, and a program that offers our students hope. Really, we just want to provide a safe place for every student to be after school. Um, and that's why we're opening up our church. We'll have a cop on duty to help keep things safe, but we're uh, going to offer a full legitimate coffee shop experience, um, a, a place for students to do homework and get homework help, games and tournaments that happen every single Wednesday after school, and a free meal that we hope will meet a legitimate need for students in our community. I, I grew up in a home without a, without a father, and there were people in the community that rallied around and uh, began to step into the role, um, uh, into that hole that my father was not able uh, to fill. And so I give a lot of thanks when I look at the success in my life and where I've been. It's because of people and it happened through the context of a church that reached out to me, uh, that invited me in, gave me a place to belong, and saw something in me and challenged me to step into that. And ultimately, that's what I hope we provide for other students in our community and in our local schools. So to PRP students specifically, uh, I would tell you that we're, we're neighbors, we're just down the street, and we believe that you belong here. We'd love to have the opportunity to meet you and connect with you. And starting January 15th of 2020, uh, we'd love to invite you to be a part of what we're doing. Yeah, the schedule for Wednesday night will look uh, fairly similar every single Wednesday. Right after school, we'll be opening up the coffee shop that's right behind me here. Uh, we'll have full, full drinks just like you'd find at Starbucks a place to play some games and to hang out. Um, throughout that time from 2.30 to 5.30, we'll have different games, different tournaments set up, 
uh, challenges for people to compete with one another and community to happen. Starting at 5.30, we'll be serving a full meal every single Wednesday that is completely free for high school students. And then at 6.30, our program starts, uh, and our program is designed just to encourage and give hope to high school students in our community. As High School Ministry Pastor Matt Erksleben has said, the program will start at 2.30 immediately after school. Starting at 5.30 will be dinner, and then starting at 6.30 will be high school ministry service. Reporting for WPRP, I'm Caleb Martinez. So Joyce, I heard about your piece. You want to tell us about it? Well, basically, I just went around and interviewed some of our students and asked them if they could have anything they wanted for Christmas, regardless of the cost, what would it be? Hi, welcome to another edition of WPRP. My name is Joyce, and I'm here with... Montez, I'm 16. Yeah. <laughs> you are. Charles. All right, you guys. You guys know that Christmas is coming up pretty soon. I guess I just want to know if you guys could have anything you want for Christmas, what would it be? Probably 50 bags of Andy's chips and a lot of games. Why? Because I love Andy's and all the games. Oh, wait, and Cherokee chicken too. Why well, lots of that? <laughs> it's my favorite food, so yeah. I love yeah. that for you. <laughs> you? I'm just trying to catch Santa. Did you just say catch Santa? Yeah. Let me know how that goes for you, You're bro. You're never gonna catch Santa, dude. Thank you. He did. He's oh. down in the chimney. Oh. <laughs> Hi, my name is Joyce Augustine. I'm here with the wonderful Sebastian Crane. So, Sebastian, you know Christmas is coming up, right? Everybody's favorite holiday. So, if you could get anything you want for Christmas, regardless of how much it costs, what would it be? I'd have to get forgiveness from this one girl, bro, that I really care about. She's really special to me, bro, and I really mess things up with her. And that's all I want for Christmas is forgiveness from her so she can understand how much I care about her. That's all. You didn't have to hit me in the feels like that, bro. <laughs> but thank you anyway. I hope you get it, bro. I really do. Thank you. All right, my name is Joyce Augustine, and I'm here with the beautiful Tayana Cardell. All right, Tayana, Christmas is upon us, and you know everybody's favorite holiday. So if you could get anything you want for Christmas, what would it be? I would probably want some bundles, because I need to get my hair done. I look ugly. We're not arguing. And oh! thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Joyce Augustine, and I'm here with... Dylan. And? Jaden. All right, you guys, Christmas is coming up, and you know everybody loves the holidays. So if you could get anything you want for Christmas, regardless of how much it costs, what would it be? Money. Okay. <laughs> A dad. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Good job. Aw, thanks. You know what I'm really in the mood to watch, though? How the Grinch Sold Christmas. By far the best Christmas movie. What do you mean? Have you not seen The Nightmare Before Christmas? Uh, yeah, and I wasn't impressed. I'm upset. Kat has us a look at the top, best top five Christmas movies. one, Elf. Buddy was accidentally transported to the North Pole as a toddler and raised to adulthood among Santa's elves. Unable to shake the feeling that he doesn't fit in, the adult Buddy travels to New York in full elf uniform in search of his real father. As it happens, this Walter Hobbs, a cynical businessman, turns out to be his father. After a DNA test proves this, Walter reluctantly attempts to start a relationship with the childlike Buddy with increasingly chaotic results. Number two, Home Alone. When bratty eight-year-old Kevin McAllister acts out the night before a family trip to Paris, his mother makes him sleep in the attic. After McAllister mistakenly leaves for the airport without Kevin, he awakens to an empty house and assumes his wish to have no family has come true. But his excitement sours. When he realizes that two con men plan to rob the McAllister residence and that he alone must protect the family home, Number three, A Christmas Story. Based on the humorous writings of author Gene Shepard, his beloved holiday movie followed the wintry exploits of youngster Ralphie Parker, who spent most of his time dodging a boy and dreaming of his ideal Christmas gift, a Red Ryder air rifle. Frequently at odds with his cranky dad, but comforted by his doting mother, Ralphie struggles to make it to the Christmas day with his glasses and his hopes intact. And 
Clark's Christmas vacation. As the holidays approach, Clark Griswold wants to have a perfect family Christmas, so he pictures his wife, Ellen, and the children as he tries to make sure everything is in line, including the Christmas tree and the house decorations. However, things go awry quickly. His hick cousin, Eddie, and his family show up unplanned and start living in their camper on Griswold property. Even worse, Clark's employers renege on the holiday bonus he needs. Number 5. The Santa Claus Divorced dad, Scott, has custody of his son on Christmas Eve. After he accidentally kills a man in a Santa suit, they are magically transported to the North Pole where an elf explains that Scott must take the Santa's place before the next Christmas arrives. Scott thinks he's dreaming, but over the next several months, he gains weight and grows an expensively white beard. Maybe that night at the North Pole, maybe Scott has a lot of work to do. Well, here's the end to another wonderful decade. It would make a resolution if, we, if I knew how to keep one. Me too. Let's hear what the changes and goals you guys are setting for 2020. <laughs> is to accomplish everything that I didn't get accomplished, to touch a bag, and to keep going to work, to graduate with good grades. The resolution is just to be more of a kinder person, not be as toxic with my friends, and become a better person, get my anxiety stuff down, and then don't forget, just try to lose some weight. Darnell Bunsey, 12th grade. Uh, Christopher Stafford, 9th grade. Okay. I'm Gene Ragger, and I'm a junior. To touch a bag, to bring my money up. Work harder for what I deserve, and I'll get what I need to start. Alexis Hoban and 10th grade. My name is Jeanette Caldwell and I am a junior. 2020. So I get their sophomore year with the grades. I think it's resolution is to get a 24 and a 18. This past weekend, PRP's very own Maurice Ogden and Anthony Anderson played in the East vs. West All-Star game, which the West won that game 16-14 on a last second field goal. This weekend, PRP basketball will be hosting the Derby City Jam Tournament with Fern Creek High School. Good luck to the boys in that. In other news, Louisville will be playing Mississippi State in the Music City Bowl, which is in Nashville, and Kentucky will be playing Virginia Tech in the Belk Bowl. This year's NBA Christmas games will be Lakers versus Clippers, Bucks versus 76ers, and Celtics versus Raptors. Blaze, how do you feel those games are going to go? I got the Clippers, the Raptors, and I got the Bucks in those games. Wow, you got the Clippers beating the Lakers with the best player of all time? Yep, 96 Jordan. Anyways, in local news, Louisville City FC changed their crest after having it for five years. They decided to change the crest because of the new decade coming up. Good luck to the defending state champion dance team and their competition this weekend. I'm Blaze Dees. I'm Marie Soja. And this was sports. This week we aren't having any big temperature change in our forecast. We're going to be staying 50s pretty much the whole time. We're looking at some 40s at the end of your 7 day. This afternoon we're going to be 43 degrees. Tomorrow morning we're going to be 37 degrees out there. With Kayla Martinez, this is your WPRP weather. Well, that's the end of another wonderful show. I hope you guys had as much fun watching it as we did making it. Happy holidays! Bye! Bye.